to Drummers Only Radio. Drummers Only is the UK's leading drum shop with store locations in Glasgow and Leeds. Our podcasts are full of interviews, gear reviews, and much more from the unique perspective of a drum shop. The show is hosted by two pasty Scottish dudes who talk real fast. Whoa. Slow down there, Braveheart. So here's Chris, the Glasgow shop manager, and Adam, the social media manager. Be sure to like, subscribe, and let's do this. Hello, mate. Hiya, Chris. I almost called you Chris for there. This is a special shout out to Liam Noonan. Ah. Uh, I won't call him Christopher anymore. Thank you for the... For the um, it was a weird great minds thing because the two of you said it on the same day. Yeah, we did. Yeah. You said it to me and then later on Liam was like, love the podcast, please ask Adam. To talk yeah, on. I think it must be a nerves thing, man. I don't know what it is. Does that make you nervous? A little bit, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I almost wanted to go into an awesome power style monologue there. But I will. <laughs> uh, yeah. Drummers Only Radio episode 38, what are we talking about today? 38, Chris, not 30. We've done 30. No, I said 38. Did you say 38? Drummers Only Radio episode 38. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about today, Adam? Well, we thought we'd do something a little bit different, as I'm pretty sure we should. Sh- sure we should. Sure we should. Uh, I'm sure we see every week, but um, one very overlooked aspect of playing the drums is actually setting them up. They are correct. Setting them up ergonomically. I mean, of course. Yeah. So before anybody um, sends a task force to get us, uh, <laughs> we we get that you probably know how to set your drums up, okay? Yeah. Um, but this was uh, something that came out of us chatting that I helped you with? Yeah, so this actually, when I first started working for the shop, I was in a bit of a rut with my plane. I didn't feel comfortable behind the drums. Um, and I very quickly learned through a lesson with Chris that I wasn't actually setting up the drums um, to suit my playing mm. or for what was comfortable for me. I was very much, and I'm sure a lot of drummers feel like this, they don't, they're never necessarily shown how to set up the drums they just set them up either to look a certain way or they they kind of almost kind of fold themselves around how the drums are set up especially if you're going to a gig and you're setting up or at least when you were going to a gig and you were using a backline kit Mm. and um you were just kind of presented with a kit maybe you were on a support band or whatever you know and you had to just play the drums how they were yeah this was something that I was shown actually that because I, I was in the same position as you, right? And Ryan, who used to teach for us years ago, yeah, Ryan Ross. Hello, Ryan Ross. Um, he did this with me, right? And it made a world of difference. Okay, so yeah. I figured that I would do it with you for the same reason, and it does make a huge difference. Yeah. So essentially, what it is is instead of you contorting yourself to a certain mm. way to fit around how the drums are set up essentially we're going to show you our approach to how we set it up so that the drums are comfortable consistent you can pretty much do this with any drum kit which is another reason why we haven't or we're purposely not using our own personal setup so yeah. we're just going to use a setup the demo kit that we've got here at the shop to show that you know it's a method that we use in any situation whether it's gigging or whether it's recording a video for the shop or mm-hmm. you know yeah, it's, and it's massively important actually because it it staves off injury, it helps longevity, you know, all these things. People, I've spoken to many people that get back problems playing drums yeah. or um, they get issues and they're, they're like, I, I was getting an issue for a while behind my right shoulder blade, yeah. which was kind of like, oh, burning pain and stuff. So, yeah. you know, I, I'm, I'm, I maybe need to revisit it for my own playing and, yeah. and that kind of thing. You know, That's, I, I, you've just actually touched on something that I think we should bring up. This is not necessarily going to be something you're going to do once and that's it. Mm. You know, because, you know, your body changes, you know, very, very frequently. Mm -hmm. Um, You might get taller. I really hope I get taller sometimes. (laughs) Wish Um, I was a little bit taller. (laughs) Wish I was. (laughs) Um, So this is something you might need to visit kind of every so often. Um, But it's a great kind of kind of rhythm to get into. Yeah. So um, we'll just start here. We have drums around and I will build a kit and talk through it. No, I'm going to ask you a question off the top. Sure. Is there such a thing... Now, I know this, I struggle with this. Is there such a thing as a, a perfect throne height? Uh, I don't, I mean, it, it's so relative to people's body. I don't know that there's a perfect throne height. For me, it's always been a case of as long as your knees are below your hips, your hips should be above your knees. Okay. Because if they're not, 
what would happens is when if your hips are above your knees, and I can feel it just doing that, you take a lot of tension on your lower back, yeah. right? So even if your feet are on the floor, um, you, the, the, there's it, it's it's making your lower back work too hard but if you put your hips above your knees and, and you kind of hold your posture uh steve white told me once to think about keeping a 50 pound note in your shoulder blades so it keeps your chest out and you don't put your head over like that and uh you you should hopefully sort of not come a cropper to these kind of things so yeah for me as long as the his hips are above your knees i try really 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 hard to lose all the tension in my legs so like relax my legs as much as possible and when i sit down to just sit down and let my feet land yeah so i don't like i'm sitting maybe a bit further back than i would normally so i like yeah so about here and if you notice where my feet are that's where my feet stay yeah now what that does is it instantly re makes you realize that the bass drum is going to face off at an angle rather than straight on. So many people end up having to turn their foot because they set the bass drum up straight on and they face out. Yeah, but I did that for the longest time. Yeah. Like, for the longest time, and it was so uncomfortable. Yeah. So the snare drum then effectively becomes the centre of you, the centre of the kit, right? Rather than it being the bass drum. The bass drum is off here. Not a lot of people get that for a while, yeah, you know. That was, um, that was something you actually taught me, like, because I... I assumed because it was the biggest drum it was the centerpiece of the kit yeah so how many times have you gone to see a band right your favorite band and you look at the stage and the bass drum is facing you right yeah. you can see the front head but when the drummer sits down you can also see the drummer square on mm -hmm. that's kind of crazy yeah he should be slightly angled yeah you know um or the drum should be if he if he wants to see the crowd straight on the drum should be ever so slightly angled yeah. so um so yeah from here I should mention as well, just because we never mentioned it up top. If you're listening to this episode, um, we would probably advise you to watch it, same as the Sonar one, because you know you'll get much more out of it. Yeah, I will do my best to describe what's going on. So uh, I'm just sitting as comfortably as I can, legs in what is effectively the most natural position for me, and I'm going to put at this stage. I'm just going to put the pedals down. We haven't even got to a drum yet because. Yeah. If I can keep the pedals where my feet are, then hopefully all going well, I'll be as relaxed as possible for playing, right? Yeah. So I'll so, put the bass drum pedal in first. Okay. So, yeah. So, so right there, so just even that, that like, discuss, does your foot feel any differently? Even with it it did, when I, when I put the pedal in straight away, I could feel that my foot, my heel was too close to my knee. Right. So, I will. Um, I don't also love being right at the top of the pedal. Right. Okay. I like playing a little bit further back. So yeah. what I'm going to do is slide the pedal up to accommodate that. Uh -huh. So there we go. Yeah. Yeah. So where that I've put the pe I, I move the pedal forward a little bit, which takes the top of the pedal just a little bit further away from my toes. And that also um, dictates how you play the pedal as well because you always you don't bury the beater the no top. i don't i don't it does you're right it does dictate how i play my 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 heel is a little bit off the back of the heel plate um which was another thing i got taught um from alan dale actually we talked about that quite a bit um about about how to actually physically play, play the bass drum so that's why i like the pedal the way i do um so i don't yeah i don't like being too far up because it feels like i'm actually having to reach my leg has to reach yeah you know so it's just at a comfortable position i can play the heel down i can play heel up i can play the way i play so i'm gonna yeah. leave that there shall we put a bass drum in no we'll put the hi-hat stand in oh okay so could you grab it for me of course I can. so i'm in the right position please so adam's gonna put the hi-hat stand basically where my foot is so yeah so yeah where the hi-hats are now feels really comfortable um and it, it what it's taught me or what it's shown me right away is the hi-hats are perhaps a little bit further away from me than i would n maybe naturally want to put them uh -huh. you know do you want a stick uh yeah sure so i will give you a stick thank you now my, i play 13s so yeah like these are the, the stick is falling at the right height um for me if you if you can see my arm on the video, you should hopefully see that it's as close to a ninety degree angle as possible, rather than being too high or too far down. Yeah, I don't like playing on top because I feel like you have to raise your shoulder, yeah, you raise and your shoulder and all that stuff. So like my shoulders are now 
as sort of relaxed and as loosey goosey as they can be, yeah. and it lets me strike the symbols. So really, when the hi hats are set up, you should almost like your your hi hat arm should almost be at a ninety degree kind of angle. Yeah, when I, it strikes the symbol, I think so. Yeah, and this was something that if you watch Weckl talk about this, the reason for that is, and when you land at a ninety degree angle, that is the maximum volume that you will get. You know, if you think about where, if you if you start at, at zero and you come all the way down, if you get anywhere before ninety, if you strike the cymbal or the drum anywhere before ninety, you're not going to get the full weight of the stroke. Yeah, because you haven't come far enough yet. And the same goes if you pass ninety, you've gone too far, so you've lost volume. Right. So what ninety does is let you just drop the stick and it will give you the most volume from that stroke yeah. so that you don't have to work so hard yeah. you don't have to hit the drums as hard you don't have to use the big muscles for power you're getting as yeah. much out of it so when you do use the big muscles the shoulders and things you're going to get more power yeah you know so okay. um yeah now we can put a bass drum in okay i'll get that for you okay so adam is going to put so that i don't have to move the pedal adam is going to put the bass drum on um and this is a 22 i, I typically don't play a 22 i, I typically play a 20 um, but yeah, we're, we're just putting this on for, for the sake of demo. So yeah, um, it's a big old bass drum. Chris is just fixing the pedal. Yep, tighten the pedal up. And now, like, bass drum and hi-hats feel great. They feel yeah. comfortable. Yeah, I don't have to, I'm not, I don't feel like my pedal is too far back. It doesn't feel like it's too close. So now when I sit down... Yeah, it's, it's, it's super easy. Do you know, as well, you look comfortable? Thanks. Well. <laughs> Thanks very, very much. So, yeah, because uh, just going back to the seat height for a second, it's amazing how all, oh, I mean, this sounds obvious saying it out loud, but it all starts from there. So if, yeah. if you're not comfortable, firstly, with the height you're sitting at, every, it's just going to throw everything off. Yeah, and we, I know, like, we'll, we'll re talk about this when it's your turn to do this, but... When I sit down behind your drums, you sit really high comparatively. Yeah. And it's maybe because I'm taller than you. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, and the way you play the bass drum, but you play your heel off the floor, don't you? I do, yeah. So you want to get that, that power. Yeah. Um, but it feels like really high to me. Yeah. Um, which for the way I like to set them up would mean that I have to lift the snare drum really high. Yeah. And then the hi-hat stand really high and all sure. that. But, yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, snare drum would be next for me. I'm going to grab the stand, so hang on. We're just going to pop it between uh, the pedal and the um, the bass drum. So, so the hi-hat stand and the bass drum pedal. Do you try and get the snare drum stand exactly in between those two? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if you notice the, the way the stand is set up, uh, there's one leg of the stand pointing towards me and, and two legs pointing away from me, and that lets the legs fit in the space okay. because of yeah. the, the tripod of the hi-hat leg. I don't play a double pedal. Um, so yeah, I, I don't need to worry about that too much. I don't have to get a pedal in anywhere else. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just I just kind of plonk it down and and we'll deal with the moving of it in a minute. Right. Um, when I I, I show you what I, I do to to sort of deal with the snare drum. So I'm going to put the snare drum on the stand, and then I'm going to get it to what I think is the sort of the best position. Right. Okay. So the snare drum is on the stand. I noted that I like the lever on the left. A lot. I don't know. I, I've never understood why a lot of people like it on the right for some reason. Some people like it on the right. I've seen some people have it between the legs. Yeah. Um. It's horses for courses for me. Um. Yeah. But uh, you know, whatever works for you. But I like it on the left. Okay. Um, so that it doesn't get in the road. If I play a cowbell, if I have anything on top of the bass drum, it doesn't get in the road. If I need to switch them on and off, that kind of thing. Okay. Um. Yeah. So I just like it there. Do you um, follow the same principle as a hi hat, where you have your left arm falling at an eighty degree? Yeah, which is what we're just about to do. So. Okay. Um, what I would typically do in this position is I would shut my eyes. Right. Because I think you should be able to play your own kit in the dark. Fair point, yeah. And, yeah. and everything be where it lands. So I'm going to do that, right? Okay. Uh, I'm going to shut my eyes, everyone. Do you uh, want another stick? No, no. This is fine at the moment. So if you notice where that lands. Now, I need you to assist me. Okay. So you if want you want to come around the front, and I'm going to get you to lift... Uh, the snare drum up to the point hopefully and you might need to pull it towards the bass drum because I would like the stick tip to be as close to the centre as it can so, here. and angle the drum towards me ever so slightly okay. because if that that'll hit the rim I'm staying right at your power source man yeah and then if you could just move the drum towards the bass drum ever so slightly 
just a little bit so that I'm in the middle of the drum because thank you because if if you if it was to stay where it was what would have to happen is I would have to pull my elbow behind my body in order to get to the middle of the drum right okay right yeah, yeah. so hopefully without it might need a little tweaking but hopefully from here I'm going to shut my eyes again yeah it needs a little tweaking so uh, so you're going to angle it now more yeah. or okay so you wouldn't reduce the height as a height no, I wouldn't because I'll get uh, the, what will happen is if I reduce the height, the stick won't hit perpendicularly. So if I need anything to rebound, yeah, it won't do. It. It'll pass that point where it'll rebound for me. So <laughs> nearly, nearly there. That's us close. Hopefully, so like that's just a wrist stroke. Okay, which is. A decent amount of power and volume um, without using my elbow, so. It just feels really natural. And what visually as well is like it just looks effortless. Oh, that's cool. You, you've, you've designed it that way. Yeah, you know, I mean? you, you know, hopefully the camera can show you the angle the drum is at. So that, like I say, when the stick lands, it, it lands like perpendicular. So if I, if I need it to rebound, it's going to come back. Yeah. So what happened there, if, for those that can't see, is I just threw the stick down and it rebounded uh, perfectly um, without any effort, you know, yeah. so because the stick has landed perpendicularly. The same way, like, if you bounce a ball, if you bounce a ball at an angle, it'll shoot away from you, you're shooting a different direction. But if you bounce it square on, it'll come back up. Yeah. The same principle applies for the drums. So now that means that... The drum under my hands is dead easy to play. And if I want to side stick, I'm not reaching too far down. Yeah. It's just so comfortable. So, yeah. so comfortable. So yeah. Um, so yeah, shut your eyes and hopefully you land perfectly where you want. So that fascinating. Yeah. Um, that takes care of the snare drum. So that that's kind of that that takes care of the I guess the core of the drum set mm -hmm. right so you've got your bass drum you've got your snare drum you've got your hi-hats mm -hmm. that's pretty much where you're going to be spending the majority of your evening right yeah now what happens when we start getting toms involved well it's all based on the same principle so what i would do is i would take my right hand and i would shut my eyes and if you look at where that's landed that's where the center of the 10 inch tom would be right so typically i don't play a 10 i play a 12 but for the purposes of today uh we're going to do two up one down yeah. So that covers everybody's bases, and I'll, I'll address ride symbol position. Um, so, but yeah, if you look at where that lands, that should be where the ten is. So let's get the ten. Okay. So we'll grab a symbol stand at the ten inch tom. Okay. So Adam has the ten inch tom on a stand. Um, no. Not tuning, so. No. Yeah. So really isn't tuned. So. Sorry, man. A little bit closer towards me, just a touch, please, mate. So that's literally dead on. So do you want to stand back? So, sure. um. Yeah, like, supernatural. Um. <laughs> our, our instincts are yeah. just to tune, tune this drum. drum. <laughs> um. It's good that both of us instinctfully just went to want to tune the drum Absolutely. as opposed to just leaving it. You know, there we are. Yeah. So what is quite remarkable, actually, if you look at this, if if we're on the the main angle of the camera, is you'll see the height difference between the bass drum and the ten. Yeah. Um, quite a lot of space there. Yeah, especially for a twenty-two inch drum. You know, you could get a snare drum in there. Yeah. You know, a small snare drum in there. You know, but Feasibly. it just means like if I come from the hats. It's just all there. Yeah, you you're know? not having to stretch too far. No, you're so... That's great. Yeah, you're so, not contorting yourself in a weird way, you're just... Yeah, it's, it's all it. pretty much right in front of you. Yeah. Um, we'll deal with the floor tom next, because I want to put... Like, I want to do a four-piece setup, then we'll add the, the 12. Right, okay, yeah. Cool, because cool. that's how I would play, so I'll show the floor tom, and again... I would just like shut my eyes and there is there's the drum, right? Yeah. So, so you'll probably see it in the overhead angle better. 
Yeah, Adam, you might need to help me. Okay. Um, so I'm going to invisibly hit the drum. So there is where I would like the middle of this floor tom to be, if you can get it to there. So yeah, we're having to raise the floor tom. I mean, I think the floor tom and the snare drum should be relatively level. I've always thought that, you know, because if you move, it shouldn't be that you move and then go down the way. Because yeah. again, if it, if you want to relate it to getting the best volume, so you try that? right. So what's going to have to happen? Because now my my, if you notice, I don't know if you guys can see on the camera, but for those listening on the audio, I've had to pull my elbow back behind my body, which means I need to adjust the angle again. So I'm going to try and do that. So okay. One, I think. So nearly, nearly there. Yeah, that feels kind of okay. That feels a bit natural, more natural. It does feel a bit more natural. Um, the only problem we're running into at the minute is the bass drum. Yeah, because it looks, from my angle, it looks like you're really kind of struggling to where your leg's positioned. No, no, it's not actually my leg. Believe it or not, it's the leg of the floor tom is going to oh. hit the bass drum in a minute. Or actually, the drum itself. Yeah. So, yeah, I might have to compromise a little. I guess... Again, it's, it's not as if you're going to be spending the most of your night on that drum anyway. So if you No, have to... and I typically will play with a smaller drum anyway, yeah, which yeah. will make it easier to fit in yeah. um, into that space. So... So movement seems to be easy. Yeah. You know? Uh, or Fluid. Easy. Yeah. No. Uh, the, the floor tom is a little lower than the snare drum. But I think it's just accommodating my body a little bit. Like I'm hitting it a little bit higher up the drum than I would maybe want. Yeah, maybe maybe about there. Yeah. And looking at it from here, the drum actually looks a lot further away from me. Yeah than that when was, I'm maybe used to playing it. That was something you taught me when we first started going over this, was that the drums, to anyone looking at your kit, it'll look super weird, but that shouldn't really matter. No, because what will happen is you will look really comfortable. Yeah. And you will sound much, much better. Yeah. You're going to sound way better than you did, um, because everything's just easy. Yeah, everything's exactly where your body instinctfully goes yeah so um the right symbol would be next here and if i shut my eyes and i just hold my arm out that's kind of where the right symbol should be so we'll try and get the right symbol to that position okay if you check it out if i just my hand and my elbow lands at the angle i want the sticks at the angle i want and it's all right onto the spot i want it to land on the symbol now if i need to use the bell it's not that big a reach but in terms of just, you know, being relaxed. It just feels like... It looks super comfortable. It really is, yeah. man. It really is, you know. Uh, even if I'm playing faster. It just... Everything's easy. Yeah. Or easier to do, you know, like it, it, the small notes, if I want to be quiet or simple, you know, if I've got to play quietly. And yeah. it, it means then it's all a technique thing and not how hard I'm hitting the drums. Yeah, it doesn't know. look as if you're having to really work yourself hard. No, I'm not. Um, but what's really weird is just looking at the angles. Yeah. So. Yeah, feels natural. And then it would just be a case of adding crashes in and putting a crash here. And that's all super simple to figure out, you know. I I, I have an interesting thing with crashes. Like, if you look at Todd Zuckerman, his crashes are really high yeah. comparatively to where his toms sit. Yeah. And I think it's a recorded thing. Yeah, yeah. So that's so it's obviously so the symbols don't bleed into the tom microphones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Um, so yeah, symbols like when it comes to that, like if you want to put a crash there, then just have a crash. Like my crash would be where that falls for that, and then that you know I've got to think about when I crash with my left hand versus right hand and those kind of things. But also things like the size of the symbol, yeah, will dictate that. I used to play with a twenty, which is massive. Mm-hmm. Um, and my main crash is typically a nineteen or eighteen. So again, would you for a crash the most? I mean, we're gonna set it up, but would you aim for? the bow of the symbol yeah just yeah. a nice clean stroke through and, and not you know i don't not want driving to, straight into no you know. no just through the symbol have it at the right angle and all that you know yeah. so um shall we do that yeah yeah okay it's over there you grab it and i'll sweet so yeah okay so it it feels like i'm right at the end of the stick for that yeah so i might boom this in okay just so that it's got a little bit more reach so one second Okay, so I have subsequently changed the angle. Yeah, straight that, away you can even see from my angle that you're playing through the symbol. Yeah, it just feels better to play. Yeah. So that it's it's there for both hands. Yeah. If I want it, there's no. I'm not going to hit the symbol if I try and hit. Yeah. The the rack tom. There's enough distance between it all, but it's like kind of directly in front of me, you know? Yeah, and again, you throughout all of this, it's maintained that look of comfort. Well, that's good to know. That's, I think that's proof that it's going to yeah, work. Yeah, it's viable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. you know? Um, I mean, we probably should open with us up top, but we're by no means saying this is the definitive way to do it. This is oh, just yeah, totally. we absolutely. were shown. Yeah, and that's what I get when I say that people know how to set the drums up. But, you know, some yeah. people just for years have just put a floor tom where it is because that's where the floor tom was when they sat down at a kit yeah um, and i mean obviously there's there's things to take into account here i mean time constraints can be one thing so if you're trying to set up super quickly you know it might just have to be that you adjust it as you go yeah you or, know two or three songs in but most gear now has memory locks yeah and there's things you can do with your rug as well i used to do this a lot i'm sure you saw this right. where i used to label out like kind of all where all my stands went uh-huh. so that if i was having to set up in a rush everything was pretty much as cl- as near as damn it as to where yeah it should be. G- good drum techs do that don't they yeah they do for yeah. major artists so yeah cool okay so what we'll do is because not everybody plays one up one down um some people play two up one down so we're going to take the ride away and we'll pop another tom in yeah. and then navigate both the ride and the tom yeah. from there all right so yeah uh, adam if i put that there that's kind of where the 10 the 12 should be for me right okay so if you can accommodate me trying to set that up now guys not everybody's going to have a second person to help them do this so it might take you a little bit longer in order to get it done but so if we have a look at this now you can see that if i shut my eyes that's pretty much right in the middle of the 12 right so um, the drums are now coming at this kind of it's an angle down the way, so the, yeah, the, te- like the 10 is further away from me, but the 12 is closer to me at the other angle. So it kind of is descending, yeah. yeah. So if I go round, that's pretty much in the centre of every drum. The yeah. 16 is a little bit further out. probably peeking the microphone sorry guys but that just feels super comfortable comfortable yeah. to play you know easy for you see yeah so like if i'm yeah. you know so if i was playing two up that's kind of what they would look like yeah that's kind of the process you would go through as well. yeah and it's weird because the, the the angle of the 10 and the angle of the 12 are different yeah they're still landing where they should land yeah still and it, again still maintains that level of comfort yeah. what are you going to do about the right symbol though okay so here I would probably um, hmm what am I going to do about the right symbol that is the question let me see would it be easier for the sake of this to put it on just its own stand no I don't think it would okay Um, I think it will be fine where it is if we just get the right angle like i don't want it there because i don't want to have to reach too far i can never understand why guys put them 
over to the far right because it's such a such a reach. Yeah. And then you don't have the same amount of floor tom space to work with that kind of thing. Like you watch yeah. Matt Cameron play his right hand, his right symbols like way over there. Yeah. Uh, I do get that crashes can be there, but I just think that is kind of where the right symbol should be. You know. Right. Okay. So let's see if that works. Cool. So we adjusted. We actually. Um, the ride symbol stand was a boom arm, but we made it a straight stand because that was the easiest way to get the ride positioned where I want. And it's actually closer to me than I thought it was going to be. But believe it or not, there's not a massive gap between the, the ride and the 12, but I'm hit, I'm still hitting still the, striking it in the center. Yeah. yeah. So even if I like... So it's still super easy to play the ride symbol. It's right, it's where I would want to hit it. You know, it's not too far away. I can still get the bell. Man, it's a super comfortable setup. Nice one. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. yeah. It, I mean, it looks weird. Feels great. Yeah. Looks weird. Yeah. And now as we're going to uh, show, <laughs> I'm going to sit behind that setup just now and see okay. how that feels for me. Cool. So I've, I'm putting myself in the position that I am, many of us may come sit into where we turn up to a gig and we're the support band and the drummer's like, dude, don't touch my drums. <laughs> don't change anything, right? Now, for me, if I, if you were that guy, sorry to give you that title sorry. there, I, I, I feel bad. Um, this is what I would be obviously presented with. So for me, straight off the bat, I feel like with my left foot, I have to stretch really far. Really? Yeah, to get the hi-hats closed. Um, conversely, I feel like I have to um, angle my right foot a little bit more as well. Well, there you go. Right. The snare drum. The snare drum feels obviously too high. I mean, you're much taller than I am, but it already feels too high. So straight off the bat, my foundation is really weak because I've not got... I've maybe got the same power in the bass drum, but... I feel like I have to like tickle the snare drum. I, I feel as though I can't get the same power that I would personally get usually. Um, the 10 feels probably about right, but again, I'm not sitting at the right angle, so I don't yeah. even know if that feels... It feels comfortable because it's the angle I'm sitting at, mm -hmm. but the angle I'm sitting at isn't comfortable. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the right symbol feels too far over to the right. Right, you know, again, that's probably compensation because I don't play a twelve as, or mm -hmm. I don't have a second tom, same as you. Um, if I were to use one, it would probably feel about there. That probably feels about right. Floor tom again feels far too far right. Yeah, you to can right. see your elbow going behind. Yeah, the back. you can kind of. I don't know if you, if you maybe not be able to pick up on the camera, yeah. but like I'm having to like bend my arm back like that. Yeah. So my arm, or, or sorry, for the sake of audio listeners, I'm having to kind of. My arm, or my hand is like at a right angle. Yeah, it's like an upside to, down L shape. Yeah, like from my body so that straight off the bat i'm not comfortable so if i rocked up to your gig chris and i had to use your setup i would fail miserably and um, crash symbol i suppose um crash symbol feels all right but again that's going back to that foundation thing of i'm already as soon as i sit down not comfortable so mm. i'm just finding comfort in uncomfortable places well then it it's crazy it's yeah. crazy how much it can change you know yeah, from person it, to person it shows you just how personable it is your absolutely is, yeah you know you're um, absolutely right my I can, one of the big takeaways from this is get gear that has memory locks yeah or oh, big time yeah you know? or even if you're savvy with if you've got a carpet that has the capability to have colourful tape stuck to it that you can see in the dark sure but that doesn't you deal know? with heights it doesn't yeah you're right that that deals with half the issue not yeah, all the I issue mean, it'll deal with your WMD your bass drum snare drum and hi-hats you know yeah um, weapons of mass destruction nice because that's I what like you that. do all your destruction with it is yeah but you know it'll deal with the positions of things floor tom legs like um, cymbal stand legs that kind of thing but it certainly won't deal with heights pretty fascinating actually yeah yeah you know I think it can be if you can understand where your hi-hat and your bass drum pedal are, are, are us to yeah. sit you can build everything from that foundation yeah pretty quickly actually yeah you know it's pretty fascinating how quickly you can build and that's the thing like we've obviously for the sake of this podcast and for the sake of you know not dramatizing it but to extend it out and really go in depth and like you know it doesn't take as long as this necessarily no it doesn't you know? no but there's other factors as well you play a 13 inch snare drum i yeah. play a 14 you know those yeah. those factors will change you know um the, the depth of the drum that's a five and three quarter if you're playing a six and a half seven or eight you're gonna yeah. use it, you know how can you can your stand go low enough well that's the other thing i was gonna say that's i, I say it kind of almost 
makes you think about the way you buy drums as well because for me right i play a 13 six and a half snare Mm -hmm. so in my mind and i know it shouldn't work like this but in my mind it makes sense to have a backup 13 six and a half snare so i'm not having to adjust things too much if i have to change it because say say for example your snare drum the 14 by five and three quarter Mm -hmm. right was my backup snare Mm -hmm. and my the the bottom head for example goes in my 13 six and a half Mm -hmm. i then need to adjust or make kind of not major adjustments, but like pretty big adjustments to compensate for that. If I if it's in the middle of say like if I if I'm in between songs, do you know? Yeah, what I'm well, to say? You, know, you know, I mean, the, it's kind of it'll offset itself because if you think about basic physics, um, with it, the drum being wider, the basket will have to come out there for the drum will lower, so you could actually raise the drum, so it might balance itself. Yeah, out. that's that's true. Yeah, I never you thought know, of that. But um, it's still going to be there's a sound adjustment as well and, and all these things and with the drum being bigger it might then mean your tennis tom's in a different place or your 12 inch tom whatever you play with is in a different place and those yeah. kind of things shall I um, shall we reconvene momentarily and I will have the drum set up how I feel comfortable absolutely are you going to play a f- are you going to take the 12 away I'm going to take for the sake of this I'll take the 12 away but I will also do a version where I have the 12 just if someone's a similar height to me. No, oh, we've well, done that, you know. So, okay, you know, so just, fair enough. I set them up for you. Okay. Cool, okay, so... Wow. Uh, yeah, we adjusted little things on Adam's setup. Yeah, which is interesting because we've adjusted it ever since even the last time that we did this, just between you and I. Right. Like, which, because, like, even the snare drum angles changed a little bit more than what it did. Well, remember as well, the first time we did this with Adam, he was playing a 16-inch bass drum. That's right, yeah, that's true. I was playing a little like big break, a break beat, So it was 16, 10, 13 with a 13 inch snare. Now he's playing 20, 10, 14 uh, with a 13 inch snare. And now he's playing, here he's playing 22, 10, 16. Yeah. So, yeah. So it, it, again, it, it just goes to show that, like, almost every time you have a different kit configuration in front of you, you'll need to do this regardless. Yeah, you know? and your 16 bass drum was drilled. Yeah, it was, yeah. Your 20's right. not. Mm-hmm. So there's different things there, you know, where yeah. your symbol um, stand goes to to put the ten in, and yeah, these kind of just things. working out all the logistics of it. Like I used to, as I said, I think I said this up top, but I used to set up the drums based on how they looked uh-huh. before. So for me, it's even weird looking at how angled the snare drum is. I would never usually have, or in my mind, I never, I would never th- thought I would have had my snare drum this angled before. Yeah, but you're just um, hitting it in the middle, or like. You know, the sound of those those ghost notes are just great, you know, because there's no effort involved in playing them. Yeah. You know, you're, when you are at the most relaxed, there's so little work to do in order to get them. Yeah, and it feels like that as well. And I feel like I can get, like, I used to be guilty of really hammering into the snare drum to the point where it it was almost at the point where it owed me money. (laughs) Um, So, um, (laughs) to feel, to get that same power without anywhere near the same amount of effort. It's kind of mind blowing when you learn it. You know, it really, really is because it means that if you're playing for a long time, you just have so much more in the tank. Absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, like, what if Chris and I usually play wedding gigs that are like four hours long usually? Yeah, three and a half hours of playing. Pro, uh, yeah, so, to eight. and that's like you know how much longevity you can get out of just playing ergonomically is is quite f- uh, fascinating. The ride symbol took a little bit of messing about with. We had it straight initially. Had it the boom stand. We had the boom stand straight yeah. first, um, but we be- subsequently boomed it out. Yeah, we boomed it out because it just felt a little bit more comfortable for me. I play with my my elbows pretty close into my body, so. Having the ride symbol just like right in front of me was was felt really comfortable. Yeah. How is it for reaching the bell? Um, it's a it's a little bit more of a movement. I'll be honest. So that probably still needs a little bit of tweaking. Mm-hmm. Um, you play with a twenty, don't you? I play with a twenty-two, right? Oh, do you? Okay. Yeah, I do. Right, so this right. is a twenty-two, isn't it? It's a twenty-two. Yeah. So if I was being pernickety right now, I would I would adjust it a little bit. Yeah. So do that. Yeah. I I played for a. I've got. I used to have a twenty-inch symbol as well. I've had this twenty-two for years now, and I love it. It's my favorite symbol. Um, but I had a 20 as well and that's when I started getting pain oh really when I changed the size of the symbol I kept the stand in the same place and I wonder if I was just overreaching or, or it was the bell was too close to me now yeah because obviously the, the, the difference in, in symbol the bell would be 
closer as opposed to further away if yeah. I'm striking them in the same place. Now, that... So, again, that feels... It's, fu- it's a funny one because now I feel like I've maybe pulled it too far forward. Yeah. Um, but I also purely on muscle memory move my seat a little bit backwards so how does that even make sense i don't know i know i don't know it's weird isn't it yeah um the bass drum feels good i feel like i get a lot of power without really much movement or effort um, and again the toms i'm so used to playing with a 10 inch drum it's just it's right there in front of me so um and because of the size of the ride symbol as well i feel like the, a 12 there i feel like would be too take up too much um, footprint right? Um, for where I find the right symbol comfortable. Um, this is maybe why I've got a thing for 10-inch toms and not maybe, 12, maybe. maybe. Um, again, crash symbol just kind of feels a bit right. All we did from what how Chris had it set up was just lowered it down a little bit. And the floor tom, again, this is a 16. I usually use a 14. So again, it takes up a little bit bigger footprint than I'm used to. But again, it doesn't feel... doesn't feel too crazy, you know. I feel like I'm not having to contort myself no. around like I was how it set how it was set up for Chris before, um, you know. So that's that's yeah, and I'm sure you can see it in the cameras. One thing I, when I bought my sonar that I had to get used to, um, which I didn't expect, was that the floor tom legs are a wee bit shorter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So or a little shorter for a form buster. Yes. Um. So yeah, it took me a second to to adjust the height of that drum, uh, mm-hmm. in order to get them where i wanted it you know? yeah um, I, so. I i've said this, i've had this conversation with customers and I, I've, I think you and i have had this conversation as well you almost have to learn how to play high-end drums yeah like I think in a so. way not not just tonally but also like just because if you're so used to playing low to mid-end drums they don't necessarily have the features that high-end drums have mm-hmm. you know so i mean i'm talking of course like things like convenience things like on a hybrid maple you know you've got the 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 lugs that you know, you don't have to necessarily detune the whole drum to take yeah. the head off it, you know, and things yeah. like that. And uh, certainly with Sonar, you know, they've, they've catered for the, the, the kind of mid-sized drummer in terms of the four-ton legs. Yeah, and just, I mean, you know, things like when I, when I bought the Vintage, I went from playing a 20 by 16 to 20 by 14. So mm-hmm. then the drum, the base, the front head is now closer to me because of where, because the drum is, is shallower. Yeah. You know, so you're going to move the air in a different way. So you might be like, oh, well, why is the volume different? You yeah. Know, if the drums are all of a sudden really loud, if you've gone from playing you know, mid-end drums to buy in a high-end kit that's all of a sudden much louder than you used to playing, yeah. just inherently, if you buy bigger drums. Well, that's it, because just when we were talking about it there, I used to play a 16-inch bass drum. Mm-hmm. So, from going from a 16-inch bass drum to a 20-inch bass drum, is like going from, like, a one-pence piece to, <laughs> like, a giant chocolate coin. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, whoa, that's, yeah, that's I mean, drastically if you go, different. Yeah, if you go from, I used to play 18s, yeah. So, you know, if I sat behind a 22, it was all of a sudden like, wow, yeah. you know, that's a big drum. I had a shot of um, Dave, our Dave, um, he brought in his drums and he, had, he plays a 24-inch bass drum. Yeah. And what struck me immediately was, like, once I'd got myself comfortable around it, was just the presence it had and the power, but I felt as though the drum was on top of me, whereas I'm so used to, with the 16 anyway, I was so used to being on top of the drum. Yeah you know yeah, so yeah. It's, it's quite fascinating how much yeah. you have to adjust you know absolutely you know yeah. do you want to sit behind my setup yes we'll do um, that we'll swap mics as well let's move oh, on. i just <laughs> i don't know if i caught in the camera but i just absolutely nailed myself in oh, the face right. with mine good there we are okay how'd you like them apples uh i don't <laughs> <laughs> give me my apples back <laughs> you apple thief <laughs> um my like because you sit higher yeah uh the you know, I'm having to widen my legs yeah. to accommodate where I want to play the pedals. My heel's too close to my body yeah. on my right foot. I'm sorry, man. I like to really open my legs when I play. You yeah. Know, that's, uh, that's the inner uh, prostitute inside of me. <laughs> so to uh, just accommodate this setup, I would have to play right at the top of the pedal, which is fine. You know, I, I can do that. But the, the snare drum, uh, my I've gone past 90. So <laughs> He's gone past 90. Uh, let's see if whoa, these guys whoa, can whoa, do whoa. 88. <laughs> Uh, let's see if these suckers can do 90 is that what he says I back to the future yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so the angle is weird and I, I feel like that would pull on my neck yeah because 
it's not I, I can't relax like I, I'm, I'm almost like the way I would describe it is I'm having to push through the drum yeah yeah does that make sense a little bit yeah, yeah. Um, the the ten's okay oh I don't like the floor tom at all wow okay fair enough like the, yeah I feel like I'm twisting my body twist and shout yeah like yeah my, my right elbow is too far behind my back yeah and at a weird angle the right symbol I can deal with it's fine hi-hats are okay I'm on top of them it feels it just feels horrible the angle of the snare drum's all wrong thanks man I love you too uh, yeah. it's, I mean it's just your vibe innit yeah I mean Let's yeah. be honest, if it was that easy, we'd all have the same setup, we'd all have the same drum kit, we'd all yeah. have the same cymbals, you know. You know, so. if I if I play this where I'm comfortable, you look at the angle, it's it's to, to the snare drum, that's never going to rebound the same way. I'm playing yeah. down through the drum because I've gone past that 90 degree yeah. angle that I like. But isn't that, that's, see, this is what's so weird about it because you have longer arms than I do, right? Uh -huh. But that, that feels comfortable to me. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just it's uh, it's, weird, isn't it? Like, well, yeah, it's like that's what setting up for your body's all about, yeah. and this is why this is the whole point, isn't it? You've got set up for your own body. It's fin it's phenomenal because if you were presented with this, like you'd be lucky if you could play five minutes without changing something. Whereas oh, I, I feel I, like I could play with with that setup all night. If I was, I mean, like the one thing. Okay, here we're going to address this then, right? Okay, let's oh, do this. We've oh, done a gig share, right? And okay. and you say, look, you can adjust the drums, but you can't adjust the height of the stool. Okay, right. Because that's how I that's how high I like to sit. Mm -hmm. Fine, I can live with that. Okay, that's fair enough to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I get that. So I'm going to keep the pedals where they are because I could probably work with those. But the angle of the snare drum now, I'm going to angle the drum away from me. Okay. So the drum, the snare drum now is almost flat, stroke angled away. I'm, I'll get there. Hang on. <laughs> Tis not as easy as it may look. And that gives me my angle back. Oh, if you look okay. at my arm, yeah. it's closer to that 90 degree angle. And listen to the volume difference. When you hit the drum. Yeah. Ha! So what I would do so with that is tweak there. I'm, I'm going to drop the, the height of the drum. Uh, okay. Okay, it's not perfect, but I can Better? play like that now. Oh, right, okay. So, so you've I, now got your core foundation back. Yeah, or as close to it, um, because there's there's now restrictions in place, um, which are fair enough restrictions if it's not my drum kit. Yeah. Um, so there's ways to accommodate it. So if, if you've got, if you decided you want to sit higher, or or you've been forced into sitting higher, then change the height and the angle of the snare, <laughs> and it'll do the job for you. Like I said, the ten's okay. The ride's okay, but we're really not getting on with the floor, Tom. No, we're not. We are not no. friends. No. So hang on, I'll try and adjust it. That's better, but then I now need to move the ride because there's just too much ride symbol above the floor, Tom, to feel comfortable. Okay. So we're going to do yeah. that. So, okay, so again, the same kind of approach. You'll move it away from you. Yep. So I've moved the floor tom back, I've moved the ride back, I've changed the angle of the snare drum. It still feels really weird how wide my legs are, though. Yeah. It feels really odd. Um, and I'm having to, pull, like I say, I'm having to, pull, like if you can't really see it on the cameras, but I'm playing the pedals at an angle. So yeah. on the hi-hat, for example, the, I'm off the footboard to my inside, to my instep. My, the, my, my heel at the back is actually off the pedal. To, in order for me to, to be comfortable, the angle of the footboard is totally different to the angle of my foot. So it's really weird. Yeah. So if I play like you, where the heel is on the heel plate, I've turned my foot the wrong way. So then we're getting into that turning yourself to to accommodate the, the bass drum. Yeah. yeah. The same goes for my right foot. I feel like I'm kind of off the pedal. Yeah. That feels really odd. It's that would feel odd. really odd to me all night. Yeah. But you know, in a kitschier situation, I'm going to be playing for all of what half an hour. Yeah, forty minutes at most. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's fine, you yeah. know. I, I could live with that because um, I'm I'm quite an accommodating guy as well. So I would probably figure out on the gig share. I yeah. would bring some stuff that people are like, 
let's scratch each other's yeah. backs. You know, I mean, a lot of people on these gig share things, and I'm sure you've been part of this as well. Bring like most things other than shells, basically. They'll yeah, bring hardware. People and get right so, into it, man. Yeah. Um, I'm sure we spoke about this. Before. Yeah, we have. I we have. I've had some stories where folk are like, "No, you can't change anything," and yeah. it's been like, "Oh, okay, great." You know, guys yeah. that sit really low but have the snare really high, so you feel like you know. Yeah. So that was like, I mean, this is obviously a great kind of starting point if. You know, you're feeling a bit lethargic about your playing or, you know, you're just not feeling comfortable behind the drums. I mean, I said I came to you for, for mm. advice mm -hmm. um, on ways to do it. So it's nice to be able to share that advice on with other people. We, I mean, w when we could have customers in the shop, we would get c questions like this, you know. so Yeah, and it's really important that you're comfortable. Like we've said, to play music, you need to be comfortable. And it's really important that you figure out how that looks. And it will look different for every single player because every single player's body's different. I mean, there's like you can you see it in some drummers, especially some drummers at, at certain levels, just how uncomfortable they look. Yeah. And, like, mm -hmm. you know, it, you can actually see, like, it almost cringes every time they hit a snare drum or something because mm. you just, it's like watching um, a gymnast with a corset on. Do you know what I mean? It just doesn't, like, they can't move the same way. It's <laughs> a really interesting way of putting it, you actually. Know. You know, and I know some guys like the vibe and the style and, you know, they're, they're all yeah. over the internet and have great careers. And that's fine because if it works for them, it works for them. But yeah, that's the thing. That's the, like, Dario Jones gets a lot of a lot of bad rap because of how he sets up his drums. I feel like I've touched a nerve just by here. No, <laughs> no. What I was going to say was there's, like, we, Paul and I, I've talked about this before. There's footage of Dario Jones playing two up, two down with traditional grip like Weckle and sounding absolutely smoking, man. Yeah. It's all a vibe. Yeah, it's all for the, all for the gram. Absolutely. Well, it's just for the, it's like, get some attention. Yeah. So you know, it is, yeah. works for him. Keith yeah. Carlock being super flat and on top and yeah. playing right at the back of the stick and all the finger stuff and, you know, like, ride symbol right in the front and all that. Yeah. You know, if it works, it works. Abs of course, of course. Yeah. As long as, my advice for any of this would be as long as it's not detrimental to your physical health. Yeah. Like, if you're not being, if you're not in pain, then fine, man. Do it. Like, set them up the way you like. Yeah. But if you want them to work ergonomically to get the most sound out, this is the approach I would use. Wicked. Yeah, man. Nice one. Yeah. Good good eating. Good eating. Good eating. Absolutely. Um so we'll just we'll just see you for the next one, yo. Yeah. Thanks for yeah. listening as always. And yep. If you've got any questions, I know we say this all the time, but if you've got any questions, please feel free to get in touch. You know, we love doing topic episodes like this. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you know, things that maybe maybe other people haven't quite thought of yet or you know questions we get asked regularly in the shop or on the socials you know so honestly hit us up with any questions you've got absolutely we'll try our yeah. Best answer. yeah all right take care guys cheers guys see you later bye 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 thanks for listening to this episode of drummers only radio you can find us online at www.drummersonly.co.uk drop us a line we're on facebook instagram twitter at drummers only uk Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. We're on Apple, Spotify and YouTube. Any questions, info at drummersonly.co.uk is the email. Or if you need leads, it's leads at drummersonly.co.uk. Thanks again for listening and we'll see you next time. Drummers Only.